All right, so I'm excited to talk to everybody today about writing a great dental school personal statement. Um, no matter where you are in your application journey, whether you are uh, you know, a first year in school or gearing up to, to write your applications, you know, we'll touch upon some key points that you ought to keep in mind as you go through undergrad and as you go through the application cycle, because writing a great personal statement, whether it's for dental school or any other field, um, the preparation really starts years before that, right? So when you come to the point of the application, you have all these experiences and all these grades that have been set already. And now it's your job to put it all together. So I think of it sort of like, a, you know, a chef who has all of these great you know, ingredients and raw materials, but now they have to make something beautiful out of it. And that's really what the personal statement is. It's that sort of that, that dish that brings it all together. So at various points, you know, I'll ask questions and, you know, hopefully folks will respond in the chat. And so we can have this be a little bit more conversational um, and I can really just hit on, hit on your question. So any questions you have along the way or a thought you have, and I'll certainly reach out to folks um, as I speak to just to solicit feedback and, and thoughts and, and just have this be a nice conversation. So I'll get into it. So the dental school personal statement prompt for, for folks who don't know, it's pretty general. All it says is your personal statement is a one page essay, not to exceed 4,500 characters that gives dental schools a clear picture of who you are and most importantly, why you want to per pursue a career in dentistry. So why you, why medicine, one page. And some students get excited about that because they're like, oh, cool. Like I can write about anything I want. And then other people say, oh, so what do I write about? I can go in a million different directions. What's the right topic? How do I pull it off? How many experiences do I write about? Um, do I need a hook? Do I not need a hook? All this stuff. And, and so it makes some people nervous. So they're staring at their resume and they're like, well, I don't know what to do. And so today's talk, we're going to basically go through what your experience will be like, most likely, if you are applying to dental school and if you're like most students. So I'm going to give you two sample intros, both of which are true about me or were true about me at some point in my life. And we're going to talk about which one you like better and why. Okay, so after I read both, I'm going to ask you guys which one you like better and why so you can get that chat ready. All right, intro one. My traditional Armenian parents presented the following career choices throughout my childhood, doctor, dentist, pharmacist, engineer, or lawyer. I played along with this game of deliberation. I won multiple awards debating international policy in Model UN, studied hard to achieve a high GPA as a human development major, and volunteered hundreds of hours in multiple hospital settings. I kept my parents guessing all along, but in my mind, there was never really a decision to make. I knew I wanted to treat people's ailments, physical and emotional. All right, intro two. Growing up in LA, I was quite the troublemaker. My parents often recall me wreaking havoc in and out of the house, hiding important bills and cookware and playing in the dirt. However, their concern peaked when I was eight years old and unable to control my facial tics. Soon I was ridiculed by classmates and struggled to maintain focus in class. When I was finally diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome at age nine, my parents did not fully understand the effects it would have on our lives. Despite my youth, I knew Tourette's syndrome would significantly shape my world and future goals. So turn it over to you. Which intro do you like better and why? Be great if you can leave a few comments in the, in the chat so we can have that conversation about it. I just yeah. want to let you know, Shirak, that I let students, uh, I gave students a voice so they Great. can also speak and they, you can raise your hand if you want to voice your opinion. Yeah, even better. Yeah, so someone asked me to go back to intro too. Yeah, and I invite that. If, if anyone, by the way, um, you know, feel free to unmute yourself and chat. That would be great. Or you can write it in the chat box. All right. No responses yet. Oh, someone just wrote uh, intro to, I feel like I know you better. Okay. Thank you, Zainab. Um, so you're right. So most people, uh, you know, when I, if I poll folks, um, intro one versus intro two, obviously if we're in person and people actually raise their hands for the different options, most people would go with intro two. 
And it comes down to a few reasons typically. So intro one, it's written fine. You learn a little bit about me, Armenian parents, you know, I, all this kind of stuff. These are the things I did, but it definitely feels like a narrative, right? Like a narrative resume. It's nothing that you really couldn't learn from my resume other than, yeah, my parents pushed me to do X, Y, and Z, but you don't necessarily get to know me beyond what you can learn from another piece of your app from my application. Whereas with intro two, it's something that you wouldn't learn from anything else that you would read on my application. And it's a little bit more em emotive, right? So it starts talking about my experience, how I felt about things. And, and there's a, there's sort of a cliffhanger at the end too, what people call like a hook or a cliffhanger at the end. Whereas I knew Tourette syndrome would significantly shape my world and future goals. So it wants you to, or it want most readers will want to keep reading because it's like, oh, like it shaped his world and future goals. What does he mean by that? You need to read and learn more. Whereas here it's, look, I want to treat people's ailments. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about like my path to dentistry. Whereas this one, it's, oh, like, how did it shape his life? You get to know me beyond that. And, and I think it's far more relatable. Okay. So, so if you said intro to, or you thought intro to, uh, most people and most admissions committees, I think would agree with you. Cool. All right. So a little bit about me. So I did my undergrad at Cornell. Um, so I grew up in LA, like I said, uh, went to the other side of the country in the extreme cold winters and, you know, did my education there. But then I came back to UCLA for my grad degree, go Bruins. Uh, and I've been helping students for nearly 20 years with the admissions process. So helping to choose the right schools, writing great essays, coaching to ACE interviews. And, you know, our dental school applicants have, have done quite well over the years, um, getting into really strong programs, whether you're looking into California programs like, you know, SF and SC or, you know, East Coast programs, Harvard or MIU, doesn't matter. Um, I'm familiar with all of them. So if you ever have questions about specific programs, feel free to reach out. All right. So now let's dig into it. Typical versus standout personal statements. What's the difference? And thinking about this comparison is really valuable because, you know, a lot of times we read like good ones online, right? Or, or a friend who got in and then we say, darn it, like mine isn't that good. I feel like it's cliche. My topic's not unique enough. I just don't know. If I'm impressive enough, I'll, I don't have a good enough hook and yada, 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 right? And so it's good to see not just like examples that worked, but also what so-so ones look like. So you can always judge, okay, does mine look more like a typical one or is it more like a standout one? So we're going to compare some features um, that you see across them. All right. Difference number one. Typical personal statements focus on the experiences that applicants think will impress admissions committees. The best personal statements focus on the qualities that make applicants truly special. Okay, so experiences first versus qualities first. It's a huge distinction. Okay, most people will look at their resume and they'll see all the different things on there. You know, I did biochem research for this amount of time, I shadowed, was a tutor. You know, I played music um, and I did all this other stuff, right? All these extra curriculars. And then they, you know, they think like, man, which one should I write about? Okay. And, you know, I want you guys to think as, as you're looking at this list, well, which one do you think the person should write about? And answers I get, they really vary. Some people say, well, it should be about like biochem or like dental volunteering because, you know, that's related to the field. They're going to know you're serious about dentistry. And then other people will say, no, 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 no. Like that's what everyone will write about. It's kind of cliche. So write about something, write about something that's the most different, right? And so they'll say like maybe do music or write about being a math tutor and then all that kind of stuff. Here's the thing though. Yeah, so, so the ones I highlighted is what, you know, even if people say, oh, like I should do something totally unique and different and stuff like that, most people will feel an urge to go back and write about the dental experiences, whereas others will say, no, like, don't do that. So let's dig into a typical intro and then we'll compare that with one um, that I believe is, is stronger, okay? So a typical intro is Mary was well known at our clinic by all of our dentists and staff based on her sharp intellect and cheerful pattern of making all of our staff 
feel like we were her best friends, it would be difficult to tell why she frequently visited. Outside of her use of a walker, her Parkinson's disease had not slowed her down much. Throughout my interactions with Mary, I wondered how she maintained such a positive attitude despite her ailments. She seemed to give our staff more joy with her beaming smile than we gave her care. I wanted to give her the best care possible, whether through asking our dentists and hygienists to check in on her or offering an extra blanket to ensure comfort throughout her visit. However, I was simultaneously frustrated that my ability to help Mary ended there. This link motivate her to find more ways to do more for patients like her. Okay. And so other people, so that's, you know, so this is a typical intro written about a dental experience. I want to be clear that it's not the dental experience that made it typical, but rather the way she wrote about it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. So now let's say someone says, all right, I'm going to write about something super different. How can I take that and make that actually stand out? Well, here's a standout one. Notice it's shorter too. My palms had never been as sweaty as when I walked on stage with my trombone in front of a 500 plus member audience on June 9th, 2015. Sure, I was pretty good, but I would like to think that being invited to play Curtis Fuller's Along Came Betty at the Omaha Black Music Hall of Fame had as much to do with the music skills I had honed over the past decade as it did with training the eight-member band of 10 to 13-year-olds from the inner city to join me on that same stage. I was nervous because this performance was for them. I needed to be at my best. Okay, so let's. Um, so we talked earlier about experiences versus qualities. That was the first difference. Okay, I'm going to go back um, a few slides. So if you look at the typical one, right? So they're like, all right, I'm looking at this resume of mine. I've done all these experiences. I'm going to choose to talk about dentistry and I'm just going to write about a patient and like what I observed and, you know, but it's going to show that I like, I love dentistry. Okay. This person didn't really think we don't really learn much about them. All we know is that they wanted to do more because they told us that, but we don't necessarily learn anything about their personality, the qualities that make them stand out or anything of that nature. Now, if we look at the standout intro, different story altogether. Okay. So when you read this, you get a lot of qualities that we wouldn't be able to learn from the rest of the application or from the, you know, from just their resume. Okay. So first off, um, they, you know, they, they've been playing, well, not for so this sentence is really telling um so their their invitation had as much to do with the music skills that honed over the past decade so commitment they do things for a past decade as it did with training the eight member band of 10 to 13 year old from the inner city right so they're others focused right it's not about them they're not nervous for them but they want to you know this person want to do it for the kids and so that level of dedication, that level of empowerment, that level of humility, want to give opportunities for others, that that really shines through, right? So this person would have thought first about, okay, what impression do I want to leave on the admissions committee? And then how do I work backwards? And how do I choose the experiences? And what do I write about those experiences that, um, you know, that demonstrate the types of qualities that I want? So I could have written or I could have shown you today um, you know, an, an experience written about a very dental focused extracurricular and written a standout intro as well. But I chose to show it, show you this because I want to, I want to highlight how you can take anything and focus on the qualities that make you special. And sometimes I get people who say, well, what does this have to do to do with dentistry? Uh, nothing. The experience itself has nothing to do with dentistry, but the qualities that this person demonstrates have all to, much, much to do with what makes a great dentist. And that's really what the admissions committee is looking for. They want to get to know you, um, you know, your commitment to not only dentistry, but the type of the, the qualities that make for a great dentist. That's who, whom they're looking to recruit. And so the qualities really, really matter. If it was just about your experiences, they would have just say, submit your CV and we'll call you for an interview. But it's not about that, right? That's why they ask you to write these essays. Okay, difference number two. 
Typical personal statements list qualities and accomplishments. The best personal st statements demonstrate qualities through engaging stories. Okay, let me give you a, an example. So let's say applicant one says, I am a very giving person. Now, applicant two says, I volunteer four hours every week to work at a homeless shelter. Who seems more giving? We would all say number two. Not because we know, I mean, we don't know anything else about applicants one and two, but based on these sentences alone, the second person has shown you that they are giving of their time and their care versus someone who just says, I am very giving, right? So when people talk about show versus tell in an essay, this is exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about writing exactly than just saying it outright with no backup. Okay. All right. So if uh, I don't know if you noticed this as we were going through it, but in the typical intro, check out how many telling statements there were. And this is not exhaustive, but just to give you some examples, I wanted to give her the best care possible. This lack of fulfillment served as a great motivator, right? So saying I, it served as a motivator to say that they're motivated versus the standout intro, the music skills I had honed over the past decade, that shows dedication and demonstrates it. And then training the eight member band of 10 to 13 year olds, right? So it's giving, empowering. Notice how there are no bolded words here, right? Because the qualities were never actually said. We did the talking for them. So imagine, you know, when you go to a party, it feels weird saying this uh, during the pandemic because obviously, Folks have been socially distanced and not gathering as much and, and what have you. But, you know, thinking to pre-COVID and, you know, post-COVID times, you know, when you go to a, a, a party or a get together or whatever, if you went in there and said, hey, guys, I'm, I'm awesome. You're going to love me. You're going to love getting to know me. Everyone would be like, that's that's a weird thing to say. But if we can let our actions do the talking and people are attracted to you because of the way you behave and the way that you sort of draw people to you, they're going to do the complimenting for you. They're going to say, Hey, you know, you, did you meet Stacy? She's, she's awesome. She's really, really cool. You should get to know her. Right. So essentially we want to write the things that will allow the ad comms to like us, to compliment us. Right. That really matters. Okay. So let your actions speak for themselves. Okay. Uh, here's another example of, of a great job of de demonstrating your background. All right. I clearly recall when my factory boss demanded that I take off my headphones so I could fill the solder pallets with precision. I want to tell her that the music helped me concentrate, that it appeased my fear of an immigration riot. But even though she knew I was a 13-year-old working to save for college, she could not find out that I was also an undocumented immigrant. So instead, I swallowed my words, took off the headphones, and apologized. So if I turn it over um, to you guys to think for a moment about, okay, what qualities come through here? There's an incredible level of maturity. So she's 13 and she's working and she's thinking, well, I, um, you know, I could have said, no, no, look, it's this because I'm anxious about the riots or whatever. And that would have been short-sighted. So she thinks well into the future. She plays the long game, incredible level of maturity, thinking about saving for college. Um, knows when to, you know, there's, there's the saying from the poker world, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? Know when to push back versus say, you know what, I'm going to swallow my words. It's probably, probably didn't feel good for this person, but it demonstrated a lot of maturity and again, long-term thinking. So all those qualities come through, even though they don't say it, right? Really powerful. All right. Difference number three. Typical personal statements put a lot of focus on other characters. The best personal statements maintain their focus on the applicant. Okay, so check out the first intro again. The blue is all Mary, 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 right? It's all about Mary. And <clears throat> it's not until this sentence throughout my interactions with Mary, I wondered, where we even see I, right? But even that sentence is, look how great Mary, 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 right? So the dental school admissions committees, they're going to send Mary an acceptance letter. And be like, Congrats, Mary. But, you know, Mary, it seems, um, you know, is more advanced in age and stuff like that. That's not who this person is trying to get into dental school, right? So, but that's what they're doing. They're playing up somebody else. 
And we do this a lot um, when we're writing about doctors too, that or dentists that we really admire. And we say, you know, I shadowed Dr. So-and-so. She was amazing. I want to be just like her. Well, what about you? Essentially pull the lessons you learned from that person and then use that as a springboard to quickly talk about what you did with your patients or people that you served, okay? Um, so if we look at the standout intro, notice how my and I start earlier and they're sprinkled throughout. They're not Mary, 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 I wanted to do more right? It's about the person. And there are other characters. There's the audience, there's the band. There might have even been another person. I've seen great essays where there's actually another person that they're focusing on. But it's all done to contextualize their work, right? The applicant, you, uh, must always be the most compelling person in the essay, not somebody else. You can use other characters, but Difference number four, typical personal statements discuss multiple experiences. The best personal statements discuss no more than two or three to describe their path to and fitness for dental school. So yeah, so many men, uh, you know, dental school applicants I see, they're like, oh my gosh, one page, got to fit it all. Service work, shadowing work, clinical, you know, international clinic work, research work, little personal anecdote. Uh, you know, like they're sort of just throw spaghetti at a wall. And, you know, hopefully it makes sense. But when you try to do too much, it doesn't work. Because you don't achieve any great depth. And that's really what we're going for here. I'd much rather you think from the beginning, okay, what qualities are befitting a good dentist? What qualities do I bring to the table? Which of my experiences best highlight those? Choose those. No more, no less. That's all you need to be really su successful, excuse me, with this process. Okay. Sometimes people ask, how about if I have four? Well, you can, but again, it just dilutes the other stuff. So you have to cut it off somewhere. I've even uh, helped people successfully write about a single 24 hour experience about one activity. And it was very successful. Top school. All right. So difference number five, typical personal statements could have been written by many applicants. The best personal statements could have only been written by that particular applicant. So when we look at this standout intro, you know, the one with Mary at the clinic, anyone who has worked at a clinic probably had a patient who was nice and could write about them. Doesn't say anything about the person. Whereas this one could have only been written by this specific person, the, you know, the, the teacher, the orchestra, um, you know, or the, yeah, whoever, you know, this musician, uh, the trombone musician and teacher and all that kind of stuff. And not only because, oh, it's about music, obviously there are a lot of people who play music, but because it was about a particular experience and her feelings came through very clearly. And, you know, you wouldn't have been able to write this not being her, okay? So one of the good tests I like to, to apply to personal statements is, could anybody else have written this? If the answer is yes, probably have to go back to the drawing board. Now, you can also infuse personal details. So a lot of people say, well, I don't have like an insane challenge. I never grew up with an incredible like disability. You know, my family's middle class or upper class. Um, you know, I don't have this like, I didn't, I don't know, meet Obama for dinner for some reason. You know, what? I don't have this incredible story. What do I write about? Well, um, that's when you have to add, infuse your personal background, your reflections, things that might seem mundane, but are critical to getting to know you. So it's not about having good material. There are plenty of bad movies made with a good premise. And there are plenty of great movies made with a, with a premise that you would, you know, question from the outset. So never, uh, never think that the quality makes or breaks your essay. It's the execution. All right. So how to write a personal statement intro step by step, because the intro is so important to hook people when they're reading thousands of applications, you have to first start by brainstorming the qualities, the character, personality, traits, or talents, and then identify situations that demonstrate those qualities, whether it's from daily life, extracurriculars, and then highlight a specific event, situation, and then tell a specific story with a lot of thoughts and feelings and write a hook, okay? Because when you're writing, so, I give you this because it's a, it's a system that works well. 
And it's a formula you can apply, but you can't have it be formulaic, like this quote on the screen says. Essentially, you want to capture them early and use a lot of like visualization. So when we think about the clinic, we think about Mary, she has a walker, but we don't think of anything else. When I think of the stage and the audience and the kids, it takes me to a place. And so anytime you can, you can take the reader somewhere, that's going to be far more engaging. Okay. So like, even if we go back to my intro about the Tourette syndrome, which could have only been written like me versus the one where I listed all my extracurriculars, like wreaking havoc in and out of the house, hiding important bills and cookware and playing in the dirt. You can see me being mischievous, right? That can really draw you in. And, and you also want to think about, um, I don't know if anybody here, you know, likes a particular stand-up comedian, but most of the time when we like stand-up comedians, it's usually because uh, we relate to them very well, right? If, you, if you've seen like a, you know, more elderly comedian and, you know, probably it's, you know, middle-aged and older people tend to like those folks more and find them funnier because their, their experiences relate to them more. Whereas someone younger might say things that you really resonate with. So like, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent of a two-year-old and um, I laugh at parent jokes more now than I did before I was a parent, right? Because I'm like, yes, that's so true. Absolutely right. Um, you know that, yeah, my, you know, my kid can be a terror, all this kind of stuff. Haha. So, so that kind of thing. And so anytime you, you know, write, think about how folks can relate to you, Right. And if you notice, like in the Tourette syndrome, uh, you know, essay or the intro, I didn't make a joke. There was nothing funny in it. And you might say, well, the reader doesn't have Tourette syndrome. So like, what does this have to do with anything? Right. Uh, well, the thing is, we've all had vulnerabilities and we've all felt self-conscious about something. You might have felt so self-conscious about your weight, about your accent, about your Tourette syndrome, about your whatever. And uh, who knows? And so if you're a human being and you've had that feeling of rejection or self-consciousness or whatever, you can relate to the story. It's very human. And that's why putting it out there in a, in a sort of, in a deliberate way, not just spilling your guts, but, um, you know, identifying key details that are important to get to know you. Those are really, really valuable. All right. Um, I got a question um, before I move on. Uh, someone asks, so I get that mentioning stuff does, that does not particularly highlight your best qualities is more realistic and relatable. However, can you go over some red flags not to include? So that's the thing. People ask me like, what should you write about? And also, what should you definitely not write about? Again, it's not the topic that makes or breaks things. You can write about, um, see, so my intro uh, was about a disability. It's a very good intro. Could be a foundation for an amazing essay. Um, some people say, don't write about anything like that. Then it's going to be like TMI and they're going to like, you know, question whether you can make it in school and all this kind of stuff. You always have to ask yourself, what is the point? People fail at this question all the time. So it's not like there's a list of five approved things and, you know, a list of five, you know, disapproved things and you better choose from the approved column. It doesn't work that way. You always have to ask yourself, okay, should I write about a disability? Ask yourself, what's the point? In other words, why, what is it that I'm trying to communicate through a discussion of my disability? Okay. Follow-up question. Is this the best way to communicate that thing? If the answer is yes, then sure, go for it. You just have to be very thoughtful about it rather than trying to look for lists of what to and not write about. All right. Beyond the intro, what do you do? So we talked a lot about intro because look, if you don't grab them early, you're, you're done. Um, and it's hard to recover because these people, like I said, are reading thousands. So highly detailed story, <clears throat> more showing than telling, and then zoom out for a moment and provide context. What was happening at the time? More telling than showing. And then subsequent events, you're going to get into, you know, all the dental experiences, having clean transitions from one to the next, and then, um, and then you conclude. And in the conclusion, you always want to tie it back to the beginning, right? You want to allude to something that you brought about before. And you also want to make sure in a conclusion that you're not adding like new material. You can sort of summarize everything, but don't add tons of new material. So exercise questions as you begin to write, what qualities do you want to convey? What sets you apart? What event or period shaped you? How did it make you feel? How can you translate those 
feelings into positive change for others? And then how will dentistry specifically help you accomplish this? So don't make it so general that it can apply to nursing or pharmacy, whatever. You have to get very clear on why dentistry? Why not another health field, right? And you got to get you got to get very clear on that. Not because your parents were dentists, not because um, you like teeth or it's a stable job. It's not about that. You have to talk about the personal path that led you there because they want to see that you're going to stay committed to this. It's not like the thing you you think this week is the right idea. So with that, I'll wrap up. Um, you know, I encourage folks to go to our dental school uh, admissions blog if you want some more um, resources. What I can do. Um, oh, I think I stopped sharing my screen. Pardon me. Uh, I was just going to write in the chat box. Okay, let me see how I can. I can share again. So I was going to type in the chat. That's okay. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you all can uh, visit the dental school admissions blog. I'm sure Christina can share that with you as well. I'll pass along a link. We have a full guide on writing the dental school personal statement, uh, <clears throat> how to get into dental school, just, you know, interview stuff, whatever you need. And if you ever have questions, you can, uh, you know, reach me at the email below or schedule a time to chat and it would be a pleasure but with that, I'll, I'll wrap up and uh, and take questions. So I have some time here to answer student questions, but uh, certainly not obligated to stay. So thank you again for having me and for, for being attentive. Any questions? Feel free to put it in the Q&A or anywhere else. Oh, and also um, I'll type, like I said, I will write in the chat about the um, the personal statement uh, guide that I have. Oh, you're very welcome, Michelle. Thank you for being here. Yeah, and so I just left a little thing in the chat box for anyone who um, wants to read further. There's a ton more information about writing a great personal statement, full length example, everything. All right, so Xiao Wang asks, my current intro is about how my grandmother influenced me a lot. How can I make that more stand out and personal? So let's back up. Um, you should ask yourself, first things first, why am I sharing this story? So nothing here has told me like, okay, my is about how my grandfather influenced you a lot. Influenced you how? And how have those qualities or, you know, those whatever she influenced you with, how are those critical for your journey to, to dentistry? That's what you need to focus on. So ask yourself, what's the point? Don't just say, hmm, what should I write about? Oh, I should write about my grandma and then write about my grandma and then say, uh, now what? If you did that, you're going from an experience first standpoint, right? And you're like, all right, I wrote this thing. Now where do I go next? But you don't have a game plan, right? You're sort of like trying to duct tape things together. So if you're going to write about your grandmother, that's okay. But I want you to first think about what qualities do I want to communicate? Okay. How did my grandmother help me develop these qualities? Okay. And then which, what anecdotes do I have about you know, my relationship with my grandmother that best highlights, you know, that best captures that story. What's a good example of that? And then write that story in the intro and make sure that there's a sort of cliffhanger thing at the end. And basically, if you write about something not dental in the beginning, you have to move along pretty quickly. If you start with something dental in the beginning, then it's, uh, then, you know, you don't have to, obviously, you can draw things out a little bit more. So when you talk about making it more personal, yeah, talk about a specific instance. What did she say? What were the sights? What were the smells? How did you feel when she said it? How did you take that lesson and apply it to help somebody else? Or how did it shift your perspective about somebody else, right? That's how you make it personal by writing about you. It sounds, it sounds very obvious, like, well, duh, but, but yeah, actually write about the experience and, you know, get, get deep about how it impacted you versus just a generic story about a grandmother. Any other questions?
Cool. Well, if others don't have questions, that's totally fine. And we can wrap up and, you know, folks can always, uh, you know, like I said, um, reach out via, via email at contact at shamasin.consulting.com and happy to answer questions. But the career center is also a great resource. Um, they have tons and tons of stuff. I feel like every time I speak with Christina, um, I, I feel like I learn more. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you have that too. So, uh, so yeah, definitely reach out, lean on them. UCLA is a big place, uh, but you have people who really care about you and are ready to support. Thank you all.